Oh, hey. This is Rick Terrio, your main real estate guide. You kind of caught me taking a break from bringing new and exciting properties to market. But not really, because I'm actually on location in my newest listing. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Got 95 and a half acres of land with over 2,200 feet of frontage on Middle Branch of the, of the Pleasant River. And that's where I'm standing right now. This is a nice, nice trout stream with pools and riffles, nice gravel bottom. And I'm sure from time to time, you can tease a hungry brook trout out of one of these pools. Located on this property is a 100 year old inn that was built in 1921. And it's six bedrooms, two baths, and uh, uh, hardwood floors, and just, just an elegant home. It does need some TLC, but, uh, but it's, it's just a heck of a property. So you know, pay attention to this video and, and ch check it all out. It's coming to market at $295,000. So six bedroom, two bath, 2,200 plus or minus square foot home with a garage, drilled well, septic, a separate building that could be converted into either a business or, or a, a small home as well. It has its own septic but shares the well on this property. There's a private pond on the property that, that uh, is, is quite scenic. Was stocked with fish at one time, but probably the snapping turtles and cormorants have cleaned that, cleaned that out, but it is a scenic little pond. Lots of wildlife in the area. We're on the Katahdin Ironworks Road, which leads into uh, Zone 9, of, uh, which is a wildlife management zone that is uh, pretty rugged ground. It's part of the Appalachian Trail goes through there, the 100-mile wilderness. This is a heck of a property. So don't mind me. I'm going to fish through this pool, and, uh, but uh, check out the rest of the video. And if you see something you like, pick up the telephone and give Rick Terry, your main real estate guy, a call at area code 207-731-99. Zero two. So, uh, across the street from the from the home, uh, this is and this is on the property. The property exists on both sides of the road. Be sure to check out the listing information at our website at lifestylepropertiesofmaine.com, and uh, there you'll be able to ha have access to the interactive map. It shows the approximate boundary boundaries for the property, um, and uh, a lot of the other information that we have about it. Again, this is a very cool property. Uh, I'm not sure what you're, what you're looking for, what your vision is, but it would do many, many things. But this is a nice kidney-shaped pond. Uh, at one time, they kept it mowed here, but it kind of got, has gotten away from them. But I can, I can still visualize having cut, cut these bushes down here that are between it and the road, and you'd have a beautiful view of the pond from, from the home. You just need to sharpen your chainsaw, come out here and have at it. But located on the property uh, are some wild forage. Sometimes you may have heard, if you're not from New England, you maybe you've never eaten these. But these are fiddlehead ferns. This would be what you would pick when they're about this size. And you would clean, wash them very, very good, and then you would, uh, you know, rinse them and uh, then boil or steam them. Or, and you could saute them. I, I grew up eating these uh, in the springtime. I like them uh, just with butter on them. My wife likes a little vinegar, but they're, they're a, delic a New England delicacy, fiddlehead ferns. So this is a Katahdin Ironworks Road. This section of it is, is paved uh, right around the corner, uh, just where the tire kind of disappears from your vision, that, that's where the tire ends and turns to gravel. Uh, this, this goes up into a, a, a area of the state uh, known for outdoor recreation. Uh, this would be how you would go to get to Gulf Hagus, which is, is called uh, Maine's, uh, Maine's Grand Canyon. It's a nice, nice hike. Uh, further up that road is, is a section of uh, the Appalachian Trail known as the 100 Mile Wilderness. Uh, this, we're located roughly halfway, so we're about mile 50 on the 100 mile wilderness. Uh, at times, uh, hikers have stayed here at, uh, at the Prairie Inn uh, over, over the years. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this property could be an inn, could it be a bed and breakfast, it could be a lodge, uh, just a big family home. Uh, uh, you're, I guess it's only limited by your imagination. Uh, it, 
it uh, it is you know by location right on on a on a, a a road that goes to you know great areas to view moose and wildlife to go fish for for wild brook trout in in unspoiled ponds. Uh, this is uh, just a heck of a heck of a location. So this is the exterior of the home. Again, built uh, built a hundred years ago. It's uh, Got vinyl siding on the outside and the metal roof currently. When it was originally constructed, the roof was slate and the outside and uh, the outside siding was, uh, was uh, cedar shakes. Uh, so I would surmise there are probably cedar shakes underneath that vinyl siding. Over here is, uh, is a garage building. Uh, nothing fancy, but a place to get your vehicle out of the, uh, out of the weather in the, in the wintertime. Uh, it, uh, it's structurally sound. It's not the uh, uh, it's not in the greatest of shape, but it is uh, it, it is structurally sound. There are two wells on the property. This was the original well, no longer used, uh, but uh, but it does have water in it. I, I guess you could use it to uh, irrigate your garden or or uh, for what, whatever purpose you need need water. Currently, this building over here. This is where the, the, the well is currently. Uh, it is 300 feet deep. Uh, it is a drilled well and it's housed inside this, this building. Um, there is water lines underground. There used to be over here in this area, it's overgrown now, a couple of trailer pads and, and this well provided water to those. And there is another building uh, we'll go check out in a minute, uh, kind of out, out that way towards the tree line uh, that was run as a business, uh, a snack bar business. That's what the, the owners refer to it as a, as a snack bar. It could be converted easily into a, to a single family residence. It does have a, its own septic and, uh, and it does have a bathroom in there. Um, the, uh, uh, this area here, um, it's kind of a pine plantation, and there used to be uh, a uh, functioning uh, grass airstrip. It's kind of grown in now, but if a person cut some of these pine trees down, we'll go check that out. Uh, you could you could uh, definitely land a small plane there. It's a nice, nice flat airstrip. But uh, this is uh, the exterior of the home. Uh, it's, a, it's just a cool place. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, perennial plantings. You know, here's a nice large bed of irises and, and some other other plants that uh, it's a little early here for our, in our growing season, but they're they're coming along. So the next stop, snack bar. So here we are at the snack bar location. We're looking across the street at a farm field that's not on the property, uh, but that is. Uh, uh, farm from time to time, currently probably growing hay. It has grown potatoes in the past across the street, but this it's got a nice uh, semicircular drive it's, that's gravel that comes up to the snack bar. And at, at one time, I'm sure all these bushes were cut down and there's a little sign here. So if you got an idea for some sort of business, I mean, you could house it right here on, on this property Work from home is the signpost. I'm sure it's embedded in concrete. It's been there for, for quite some time. Uh, but there's the, the exterior of the snack bar building. No one around here today. I could use a hamburger, but we'll persevere. It's on a slab, um, it's in reasonably good shape, it does need some love, got a metal roof, it does have its own septic and it, uh, it again it, the water source is back by the main house, it comes from that well house. So. This pine plantation, this field is roughly uh, 30 acres in size, roughly, but it's pretty well overgrown with pines. But it's a uh, it's a cool walking path. Um, you can we'll 
take a little journey. I'll show you where the airstrip was. So we've made it to what would have, would have been the, the grass airstrip. It, it has grown in to the point where you couldn't land, well, you could land a model plane here, but uh, you wouldn't land anything that, uh, that you, can, you can set in. But if you cut down some of these pines along either side, it is a nice flat grass airstrip. It goes down to the main house. So as I was cruising along the airstrip here, I noticed, I don't know if you can pick this up, but there's a small moose, moose sprint here next to my hand. So moose are frequent visitors here to the property. I noticed on the inside of the house where the current owners at one time are recognized by the local Boy Scout chapter for having uh, opened up this place to allow them to have their, their camporee. And I could think of no better place to have a camporee. What a great place to pitch a tent and, and be close to some of the most beautiful hiking areas in the state uh, with Gulf Hagus just up the road. So let's go inside this 2200 square foot, six bedroom, two bath home out here in the section of the Beamy Township known as the Prairie. What this is, or is not, this is not a little house on a prairie. Come on in. Okay, as we enter the, the home, you'll notice that the door is, is correct to the, to the period. I would say this is the original entry door into the home. We enter into what would have been the original mudroom where you can remove your shoes. The home has hardwood floors throughout. To the left here is, a, is one of the bedrooms that's currently serving as the master bedroom. Notice tall ceilings, all the wood trim is correct and original to the home, in very good condition. Proceed down the hall, there's another smaller bedroom currently serving as the grand, grandchild's bedroom. This bedroom here is configured and currently being used as an office space, but could be used as a bedroom again if necessary. Here's a first floor bathroom. to the kitchen. The kitchen has linoleum on the floor. The rest of the house has hardwood floors. I would surmise there is hardwood under the linoleum, but I cannot say that for certain. The cabinets are original to the home. Hard surface, gas cook stove, stainless refrigerator. 
there is a three season sunroom that was built onto the back of the back of the home. It does have a radiant propane heater uh, for the winter months if you choose to sit out here and it might have a little chill. But uh, overall, it's, a, it's a, some nice additional space with lots of windows looking out to where you, quite often you're going to see moose or deer, turkeys in the backyard. Dining room is off the kitchen. It's very nice. Got a beautiful built-in hutch on the far end here. And this home is 2,200 plus my square feet of finished living space. Six bedrooms, two baths. Formal living room, tastefully decorated currently, has a beautiful river rock fireplace or mantelpiece that is built in. As far as I understand it, the fireplace is currently non-functioning back prior to my clients owning the home oh, quite a while back. Um, there was a fire here in the home, burn a hole through the hardwood floors, which were, have all been repaired and replaced. And after that fire, they stopped using the fireplace. I will point out that there is a water leak in the roof around the fireplace. So that does need attention. go out into the main hall and we'll head up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, to the immediate right, is a very large bathroom. It's a stand-up shower, twin sinks, and hardwood floors throughout the second floor. Got a bedroom. Here is a door that separates these two bedrooms from the one another. Again, more storage here. We'll proceed to the end of the hall. This is a very interesting feature. You can uh, entertain your grandkids with this because they'll struggle to figure out how to dial this phone, but it, it does indeed work. This is a working tele telephone. This is the largest second floor bedroom. Very spacious. Again, another large closet on this end. And there's another closet behind the lace curtain over there. But this is a very, very large second floor bedroom. So this, this is Rick Terrio, your main real estate guide on location at the Prairie Lodge in Avimi Township. If you'd like to arrange a personal viewing of this property, this 2200 plus or minus square foot home, six bedrooms, two baths on 95 and a half acres with a trout stream, give me a call at area code 207-731-9902.